Okay, hello everyone. Time to do Natas level 3 to level 4. Uh, we have our username and URL here, which I've logged into on this page, uh, where we have the message access disallowed. You are visiting from, and then an empty string, while authorized users should come only from uh, this particular URL. Okay, and we also have this option to refresh the page. So maybe we'll just click that once and see what happens. Okay, so it's changed this empty string to this URL, which is actually the URL that we're currently at. Um, so to talk about this level, we're going to we're going to need to delve into HTTP uh, and a, and a couple of other things actually. So this is quite a big one. Um, obviously, I can't really talk in depth about HTTP. Uh, I would suggest uh, to either go and read a little bit about it. Uh, there's a the the original document called the Request for Comments is available on the internet, maybe I'll link that in the description where HTTP is sort of like technically defined um, and that will give you a much uh, deeper understanding but I'll try and sort of provide a, a brief um, overview of what we need to, to complete this level. Um, so HTTP is kind of the, the, the protocol in which we uh, can make requests to web servers, you know it's like a language, it's like a, a message standard which we can send requests uh, in a way that a web server can understand and provide us with a response, whether that be a web page or, you know, some information. Um, it's just essentially the way we talk back and forth to web servers. It's on top of the uh, TCP uh, protocol, uh, transmission control protocol. Which again, if if you if you're unfamiliar, I would I would definitely recommend having a little look at that sort of stuff um, it will really help you understand what's going on with these sorts of uh, these sorts of exercises but essentially yeah in HTTP we send the server a get request um, and then the server responds with the, the HTTP uh, the HTML website and when we see a message like this somehow you know this when we see it when we read this URL somehow it knew where we were coming from right like it knew it knew that when I hit refresh that I was originally on this URL um, and it's provided it's put that information in here so we need to we need to have a, a deeper look at this um, and to do that we are going to use um, a software called Burp Suite now again Burp Suite is going to require some sort of initial configuration um, which is beyond the scope of this but I'm going to leave a, another article in the description with how to set up Burp Suite with Foxy Proxy um, which is what I'm using in, in um, on Firefox uh, and I'll sort of show you how that works in a second so what we're going to need to do is start up Burp Suite to begin with now Burp Suite you can download um, on any platform I believe uh, if you have Kali Linux like I'm using then it's it's pre-installed, which is one of the really good benefits of having Kali Linux. It makes things a lot convenient. Um, but we can go up here and just type Burp Suite and open this up. And now it's the community edition that we'll have access to. Um, we get this uh, Java um, sort of uh, warning, but that's okay. And because we're only using the community edition, which is the free version, we have we only have access to this um, temporary project, uh, but that's fine. That's all we need. We're going to use the burp defaults as well, and so we hit start project, and this loads up burp. You could you could solve this problem in with other sort of uh, methods, but but this is probably this sets us up if we start using burp suite now um, for the later exercises. So once we're on Burp Suite, we need to start putting our our web traffic through um, Burp, the Burp Suite essentially, uh, and we do that using Foxy Proxy, or I'm going to be using Foxy Proxy. You see how this thing configured as Burp, which if you follow the article, you'll see how to do that. So I can hit Burp, and on Burp Proxy up here. This this program, by the way, is like absolutely incredible. It has so many different features and options, and I'm not going to talk about them now. But we'll, you know, as we go through, you don't will get used to 
lot more of them, you can see how this intercept is on. Basically that means if I request something, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pass the, the traffic through burp suite and then we're going to be able to see directly what is being sent back and forth um, to the web server and we can modify things you know as we see fit it's really really useful so we keep this intercept on and we go back to our uh, natas4 web page and if i hit refresh now you can see how burp suite pops up and you can actually see now the the http request that's being sent um, <coughs> to the web server so at the moment if i go back nothing's happened you can see how we've got this this um it's trying to sort of it's waiting for a response essentially um, so we're sort of holding it up but we're just keeping hold of this HTTP request you can see how like the beginning of the HTTP request is this get um, slash index.php so that's the website it's trying to to fetch from the um, the web server and this is the HTTP 1.1 protocol so this is going to be like at the top of most of your um, requests there's get and there's post there's different um, HTTP sort of requests but if you read the RFC you'll get to know a bit more of them and then there's these headers so all of these ones are headers here now what what these are is information that we're sending over HTTP to the server so you won't normally see this when we're just on a web page like this but that's actually what's going on is we're sending this text document to the web server it's then interpreting it you know it's got software on its end that's interpreting it and sending back the uh, the a response essentially whether that be with the HTML for a web page which then our web browser displays really nicely like this for us or maybe an error message or something you know anything um, but what's important is that we send a load of information to the web server every time we send a HTTP request now not all the only header that's actually um, sort of uh, compulsory um, is this host all the others are kind of optional we don't have to send these um, and we will still get something back so if we go through all of these things because by looking at this we we know that we're telling it somehow where we're coming from um, and so we want to see if that information is in these headers which we would expect it would be right we can see user agent which is the, the sort of browser uh, information a load of other things like encodings that we accept and and stuff the authorization which is um to do with our when we signed in to begin with you know when we first sign into this um, natas4 it came up asking for a username and password that's just a http you know one of the um sort of features of http and we have this referrer uh header and you can see look it's got it's got this um, this URL. So if we now forward this by le and let this packet go through, and then this is just a random. There, there'll be loads of other stuff like this is like goo something to do with Google. So we're just going to let all this through. You see how that referrer header, the text in there, is now here. So all that this web page is doing is oh and it's just come up to say something else this is just again some random stuff which we can forward um, so all that this page is doing is taking the information from that referrer header and and checking it to see if it's this and if it's not this it's saying it's disallowed and it's putting where we've come from and I'm guessing if it, if it is this then it's going to say you know oh yeah you're coming from where I expect you to be coming from and I'll give you the password now the problem with that from a security point of view of course is you can't use HTTP, head, HTTP headers like this because because we are just it's just text that we can modify um, so it's really insecure to do that right um, so let's let's just copy this copy this and refresh so we get this get request again and now this time we're going to just change this header we're going to say no 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 we didn't come from from that natas4 place this is where we're actually coming from even though we're not right it's just it's just there for us to change 
This isn't, you know, any sort of um, proof that we came from that place. It's just some text. And we hit forward. And now look back. And you can see now it read that, it compared that referrer, and it and it said, yeah, you're coming from where I want you to come from, even though we're not. And it's displaying us the password. Okay, so I know I was very brief there, especially with how Burp works. Um, but but you know that that's how we get past this challenge. Um, and I would I would strongly look at strongly suggest looking at HTTP, um, maybe finding out a little bit more about Burp Suite, um, Port Swigger. They have a brilliant website with an academy with loads of stuff to do with web um, security and you know but we're going to get used to this this program a lot more um, as we go on and if you have any problems please just message below and I'll um, I'll be happy to to talk about it a bit more and to try and help out anyway that's enough of me rambling on for this video and I shall see you in the next one